It's just about time to go to the Nether, but there's one little thing I want to do first. The Nether is an extremely dangerous place, especially this early in the game when I have terrible weapons and terrible armor. And the thing is, if I die there right now in the Nether, I'm going to respawn back at my original spawn point, which is... Ah, we're on the wrong layer. One second. Original spawn point all the way back at the flower field. Which isn't that far away, but it still would be really annoying. I'd lose all my inventory and go all the way back there. So the way we can get around that, sort of, is by building a bed. If you build a bed and you sleep in it, it sets your spawn point to the bed. But to build a bed, I need wool. To get wool, I need to shear sheep. To shear sheep, I need to make shears, which is just two pieces of iron. Let's go find some sheep. I think I know where some are. I'm pretty sure if I go that way along the coast, that I'll be okay. Pretty sure I saw some sheep over in this direction. Uh huh. I see them on the map. Nice. Ten white and four black. I think a bed is just three planks and then three things of wool on top of that. Yeah. I can actually decide the color. Could go with a black bit if I want. Yeah, let's go with a black bit. Now, there is one problem. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to sleep. Uh, <laughs> there, nice and cozy. <laughs> if I get cold, I can light the furnace on and just fry there. Oh, hey, I didn't realize I had so many copper ingots just waiting. Oop. Yeah, so the problem is you can only sleep at night. Do I really want to wait for night time? What time is it? Ah, oh, it's midday. I'm not, you know, screw it. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to hell. Now, it's always a good idea before you go to another dimension that's dangerous to make sure you don't have anything super valuable on you. I guess the Engineer's Hammer's kind of valuable. Yeah, but it's not too bad. Here we go. Oh, I'm scared. I don't know what this mod pack's done to the nether. I'm sure it's way more dangerous than it was before. Honestly, the vanilla nether is not that bad. Yes, seems all right. I mean, it's hell, but I've seen the Nether and some other mod packs that are much, much scarier. This looks fairly vanilla. I, yeah, it's. I, I don't see any super dangerous mobs. Nothing flying around in the air or anything like that. Okay, I think we're good. So I need a couple things. Um, I think the things I need the most are a bunch of netherrack, which is just kind of like the basic building block of the nether. It's hellstone, or whatever the hell it is. I'm not going to waste my diamond pick on that. I'll just use a stone pick. It's very, very fast to mine. Um, yeah, there's also nether... There's also nether versions of a lot of the ores, like nether gold instead of just gold. I don't know what's different about it. I think the nether version of the ore may give you more gold from it. It's also quite hard to mine, as you can see. It takes quite a while. This is with a diamond pickaxe. Let's actually take a look. What is this used for? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, if you just straight up smelt it, you actually turn it into two gold ore. So it's basically double ore. So definitely valuable stuff. Oh yeah, and nether quartz. So that's the things I need the most. Nether rack and nether quartz. And I'll be getting this stuff as well, just because I can always use it. So let's do some mining. 
I've gone through stew, <laughs> stew, two stone pickaxes of netherrax. I've got almost three stacks. Oh, no, almost four stacks. Yeah, so that should be absolutely as much as I need of that for a long time. I also got a couple other things, some nether coal ore, and I'm actually, I keep running out of coal, so... Yeah, that turns into full coal ore. Two of it, so once again, double. And what do I do with that? I could just break it. I could place it in the world and break it to get normal coal. Uh, which is probably what I'm going to have to do. I could grind it into coal dust, but wouldn't it be faster just to break it? Place it and then break it and turn it into coal? Pretty sure that'd be way faster. Looks like you can just smelt it into coal as well. Hmm. Anyway, I also found a couple other things. A little bit of osmium, the gold that I think you already saw, some nickel, some lead, and most excitingly, some iron. Now, I'm hoping this turns into the type of iron I can use in the grindstone, because I'm very low on iron. And it was so hard to find, so... Please... Yes, it turns into the goethite! That is exactly what I need. So this 14 actually will turn into 28 of the usable iron. Which is like double what I found on my huge journey in the overworld at one time. So yeah, I definitely want more of that. So now that I'm done with the nether rack, let's go on a little bit of an adventure and try to find more ores. And also show you a bit of the nether. Uh-oh. Blaze. That thing's dangerous. It floats, it shoots flamey things. Bad news. And it's going to be damn near impossible to hit without a ranged weapon. get it. Let me see if there's another way I can go. What about out this way? Whew, what a drop. What a drop. And by the way, if you're freaking out when I get this close to the edge, thinking, oh my god, you're gonna fall, uh, there's actually, if you hold the sneak key in Minecraft, it prevents you from going over the edge. So you can go, you can keep pressing forwards and you won't fall. So, don't be too scared. Of course, that's not to say I might accidentally let my fingers slip. Could happen. But it won't, right? Nah. Actually, you know what, this is pretty good. There really are almost no enemies here. It's a big drop, but I can just build a bridge. And this is one of the super useful uh, uses of the sneak key and being able to sort of go over the edge a little bit. Because if you want to make a, if I want to make a land bridge that just goes straight out here, I need to place, place it on this side of this block. Ah, oh, shit. No. Ah, I can't reach you. Okay. <sighs> I could very safely but very slowly just mine through the... just directly through netherrack rather than going to a kind of exposed section, but you find so much more ore in an exposed section. <sighs> the thing is, if I build a bridge going out from here and then I get hit while I'm on that bridge, it will probably push me off into the lava. So it's super dangerous. You do not want to build when you're under threat of getting hit. I gotta find a way out of here. Like, I think if you go to, oh, before I go too far, by the way, I should make a waypoint for my portal. So if I get lost, I can make my way back. Yeah, this map, this whole map thing is actually the journey map mod. And it is super handy. You can double click anywhere and make a waypoint. I'll call this exit. I'll disable it just so I don't have it showing up on my screen, but at any time I could enable it and it would show me where it is so I can make my way back to it. There's a little something down there. Okay, 
I'll bite. Let's make our way back up there. Yeah, close enough. I'll put some torches on it so I know that I need to go up here. So there's some things I can't get. Cobalt and stuff, I need a higher level pickaxe to be able to get it. Well, I can certainly get this in other quartz. Oh, shit. Yeah, you gotta be careful about that. Could be lava behind anything. Nether quartz seems to pop up in really big veins. It's always a good idea when you're in the nether to have some sort of a basic construction block like netherrack or cobblestone in your hotbar. That way if lava does appear you can quickly shut it off before it pours all over your face. Let's clear out this little section of it. Let's see if I can get through here. Looks like it. Oh. Oop. Oop. Close enough to it to shut it off. Oof. Here we go. Oh. Looks like that's the start of, um, I think a fortress, right? Yeah, so there's um, fortresses that are randomly around the nether, which contain special things of some sort. I think... I don't really remember. To be honest, I know almost nothing about the nether. I grabbed what was here, and I also grabbed a couple pieces of soul sand, just in case I need that for something. I really don't know what it could be used for. Just in case. Soul sand is basically like demon sand. If you look at it, it kind of looks like screaming faces, and also it slows you if you try to walk over it. Let's get the heck out of here. That creepy noise is aghast, by the way. Gigantic flying things that shoot fireballs at you. Well, I guess not so much fireballs as just explosion fireballs. Let's see if we can get a peek at it. Show you what it looks like. There it is. Wow, I went to the nether with almost no armor and barely any weapons, and I didn't die. Got a lot of things to process now. Let's take stock of what I've got. Tons, like four and a half stacks of netherrack. A bunch of coal, which is good. I'm actually pretty low on that. At least the, the basic kind of coal that I often need for crafting recipes. I got a bunch of anthracite coal, but I don't think it's really used in recipes. 46 pieces of iron ore once you process it out. Yeah, really nice. All right, let's get to work. All right, so I've done a bunch of processing, sorted my inventory, and also sorted my chests a bit. I made a new chest for, basically for coal and gem-like things, just because this random chest was getting way too full. So let's make a Coke oven. And also before we do that, it's nighttime. You know what that means. Alright, now if we die, we'll respawn here. Um... Do I need to do anything extra? No, I think... I think I've got it all. 
I do need seared bricks, which I'm making right now. Nether bricks. Let's grab a bunch of these things. I think we can just make it. So seared, no, uh, coke brick is what we need. We need a bunch of these. Tiny coal, nether bricks, and seared bricks. So I've got seared bricks, I've got nethered bricks. Nether brick, by the way, comes from cooking up the nether rack, which is what I needed it for. And the tiny coal comes from normal coal. If you just put normal coal in a crafting window, it turns into a bunch of tiny coal. And that should be enough, I think. No, that's not enough. What did I run out of? Was it coal? No. Oh, the seared brick. Alright, that should be enough. Twenty-eight. I think I need twenty-nine. Alright, that should be perfect. Alright, let's go make a coke oven. Coke oven is going to allow us to make coal coke, which is going to be used for a bunch of things, and also it makes... Um, it makes creosote oil, which is what we spent so freaking long trying to make with this thing. So this is going to make it way faster. So if we put the coke bricks in a 3x3 three three pattern. Like that. Oh, I guess it did make too much. Oh well. And then hit it in the center with the engineer's hammer. Boop. It's called a multi-block structure. Literally just a bunch of individual blocks you put together and then it turns into something else. So now we have a coke oven. So if we just throw some coal into this thing. It's uh, it's very, very, very slow. But it is going to, once it's done, you can see it's only a 10% right now. Once it's done, it's going to turn into a piece of coal coke. And also, it's going to give us a bunch of creosote. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a way to see how much creosote is going to give us per coal. I don't think that displays here. Uh, oh wait. Ah, yes, it does. Okay, so one piece of coal is going to make one piece of coal coke and 500 millibuckets of creosote oil. So after two pieces of coal process, we're going to have enough to have an entire additional bucket of creosote oil. And make eight more treated wood planks. So way, way faster than this freaking thing. I'm not going to use this probably practically forever. Unless I need seed oil specifically for something. Let's get some more coke in that thing. Or uh, coal in that thing, rather. What the hell is that? Seared brick. Minecraft multi... what? <laughs> what the hell? Did I... what? I somehow placed it on the crafting table. Right click, it opens up the GUI and also places it. Huh. Wait, you can place this... anywhere? Whoa, wild. Okay. I mean, can you do that with any ingot type thing? Apparently. I've never seen that before. Okay, I think we have everything we need to finish the smeltery. But just before that, I am running out of food. I'm getting quite hungry. I ran out of all the bread and I realized I should probably switch over to eating something else. I'm pretty good on grain, protein, and vegetables, but oh man, my dairy's terrible. And my fruit's not very good either. I'm not going to do anything about dairy at the moment, but let's do some fruit stuff. So I could just keep eating the main fruit that I have, which is watermelon. However, we can do something with the watermelon to actually make it more nutritious. We can turn it into juice. And it's actually super easy. So to make a juicer, we just need, oh, not cobblestone, stone stone. We need a stone pressure plate and a stone. 
That's it. And then you get a juicer. To be honest, the juicer's kind of overpowered. It's super cheap to make, as you just saw. It makes just simple items like just melons or apples or something much more nutritious. And it also has unlimited durability. So combine the juicer with some sort of a fruit, and you get melon juice. And it turns it from something that gave you... Let's see, how much was it? Yeah, so melon on its own, if you eat it, it gives you one thing of hunger and then half a thing of saturation, which is very little. But if you just juice it, then it gives you two and a half hearts, and then look at how much saturation. Six. It's so much better. Yeah, I should have done that a long time ago. Hmm. This doesn't seem to actually give you fruit, does it? Uh-oh. Yeah, this is fruit 1%, but the juice isn't. Hmm. Okay, so that's actually not going to... It's great for just getting my hunger up, but that is not going to contribute to fruit. Interesting. What if that's intentional? Because, I mean, juicing fruit does take away some of the nutrients, I guess. I, th I think the only thing it really takes away is fiber. I don't think juiced fruits really give you any fiber, whereas eating the fruit itself does, but I don't think it would affect any of the other nutrients, would it? So it might be something they just accidentally left out of the nutrients mod, the nutrition mod. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and make the smeltery, shall we? So I got a bunch more gravel and clay and stuff like that so I can make a bunch more seared bricks. So what do we need? Um, smeltery controller. I'll just search for controller. So we need this thing. To make this thing, we need seared furnace controller. To make the seared furnace controller, we need seared bricks and an iron furnace. So we need... Five iron plates in a furnace. That's easy enough. Um, I'll just take one of these. And I think I've got the iron plates on me. Yeah, I, I made that for one of the quests. There we go. There's that. Ah, right, and this is the part I needed the coke oven for. I need a block of coke. A uh, block of cold coke. Which I should have made enough of by now. Been leaving this running for a while. Oh yeah, we got plenty, and we have seven buckets full of creosote oil. Nice. I'm going to put a crafting table up here. make a block out of that. And we actually have a quest for that, I believe. Yeah, it's for the coke oven. We need the coke bricks. And we need the block of cold coke. And it actually gives me enough for two more blocks. Sweet. Okay, I think we can make it now, right? There we go, smeltery controller. So this should give us a working smell tree. And it does. It's just really, really small. And the thing is, I actually have enough bricks that I believe I can expand it. So let's actually just expand it right now. I'm gonna tear you apart. There we go. Much better. Now it's a 3x3 three three on the inside, and it's too high. It can fit way more now. I also added a third drain, so now I've got two casting tables, one casting basin, I also made some faucets, which is what you need to pour out into these casting things. Okay. Um, oh right, this thing needs some fuel, so I'm gonna pour some lava inside of the tank. There we go. Now it's gonna be able to melt stuff. Question is, what can I melt? I know I can definitely melt the normal iron. 
And um, normally this does ore doubling. So normally if you put a piece of iron ore into this thing, it'll um, it'll give you enough... Well, it converts it into liquid, but it'll give you enough liquid to basically make two ingots worth. But with all the weird stuff going on with the iron, I don't actually know what I can put into this thing. Normal iron, definitely yes, but what about the other stuff? Like... I don't know, hematite? Let's try the really crappy stuff. That and the siderite. And then, do I have any of the normal stuff left, or did I process it all? I'm pretty sure I have some left. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's getting dark. Okay, normal iron. Yes. Let's take that out. Ooh, it actually consumes it just to put it in, even if you take it out. What about this? Can't be molten. Shit. Okay. Okay, that melted. So, is it only the really, really low grade stuff that can go inside of this? I don't know, it seems inconsistent though. If you figure that basically the more um, millibuckets of molten bloom it's going to give you, the higher quality it is, then you'd think. If this thing is 450 and it can melt, then how come something that gives you 400, which is less than it, can't melt? But the really low quality stuff can. I don't know. Well, let's see how much that gives us. So normally that would just give us one ingot's worth, even if we grind it in the grinder. The grinder does not double the ore of this. It doubles some other things, like I think tin was doubled when I ground it up, but not this. So at the moment we have six nuggets worth. One ingot, six nuggets. Oh, it doesn't double it. So it's just a faster way of grinding, basically. <laughs> I'll take it. I hate grinding manually. So I'm just going to toss all of this in, I guess. Yeah, let's get all that melting. Um... Mm. I guess we can make some tools? I don't know if I'm I, if I have advanced enough iron and, and ingots and stuff to be able to make decent tools, but let's get set up with tools. So Tinker's tools are pretty cool. They're also complicated and I don't understand them very well, but I know we need like a million different tables. Um... So we need a pattern... Well, we don't need a pattern chest, but we should get a pattern chest. We need a bunch of blank patterns with... Oh, paper. <gasps> treated stick! No! Oh, it takes treated sticks and not normal sticks. Actually, that's fine. We have plenty of creosote oil. Yeah, let's go grab a bucket of that creosote oil and turn it into a bunch of sticks and make a bunch of blank patterns. We're gonna need them. Put that into there. Fills it up. Twenty-eight sticks. Eh, that'll do. And we need paper, which we can make from sugar cane. Do I want to use that all up? There might be an alternative way of making it with something else. Let me, let me check. Like maybe rice or something? I'm not sure. Yeah, three rice equals three paper. Or sawdust and water, no thanks. What else? Sawdust, sugar cane, book, blank blueprint. Um, let's go the rice route. Whoop. Ah, oh, can you not drag diagonally like that? I guess you can't. Um, oh, balance grid. There we go. So 
so blank pattern. It's gonna make a whole bunch of these. Let's make the pattern chest. Any plank wood, easy enough. So we're gonna need the pattern chest, we're gonna need the part builder. And this will all come together. It's weirdly complicated. I don't know why you need so many different builders and parts and stuff, but it'll all make sense. Sort of. <laughs> Blank pattern and logwood. Okay. Blank pattern, logwood. I don't think I actually need four parts. I think I just need three, and technically I don't even need the pattern chest, but that's going to be very helpful. The other thing I need is the stencil table. Blank pattern and plank. Okay, that should be enough. Oop, night time. Really don't know what kind of tools I want to make. The Tinker's tools are pretty complicated. You could really go all in and just like min-max the stats on them. But anyways, let's... I'll put... No, that should go in the middle. Put that there. Part builder. Stencil table. Why is the pattern chest only one single spell? But Oh, it grows automatically. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. I was like, why does it only have one spot? Because in the past, I've, I've played earlier versions of this. In earlier versions of Minecraft and older versions of Tinkers, where this whole thing is not some weird growing thing. I thought maybe that was an expert pack thing, where it's, haha, your pattern just only holds one pattern. Anyways. So this is the stencil table. We put blank patterns inside of here, and then we choose what we want to make a stencil of. So, uh, and then for the most part, we're going to end up taking the stencil and putting it inside of these casting tables, and then pouring the whatever fluids we want to make the tool out of on top of that, and then we take it to the part builder and make our thing. Hmm, okay. It seems I'm still getting ahead of myself. I've been really focusing on the Tinker's Construct because I really want the tools, but I actually still can't make them. There is a fourth thing that I was missing. I couldn't find it because uh, I think they just disabled it in the mod pack, so normally there's something called a tool station. I think. I say I think because it... This mod, uh, Tinker's Construct, has changed quite a bit, I think, between the older version that I'm used to and the newer version that's in this mod pack that I've never played with. But I'm pretty sure there's a thing called a tool station that allows you to build basically the tier 1 category of tools, and then there's a tool forge which allows you to make the next tier. And I think what the mod pack's done is disabled the first tier crafting station, so you can't even make tier 1 tools. So I think I have to wait till I can make the tool forge, which is actually in the quest book. It's down here. But if you look at what it takes, it is it feels very far away. Depending on which way you go, either takes mana steel and a bunch of other stuff, which is we have to get into Batania for that. Mana steel or energetic alloy. So this way is Batania, which means we need to get into the uh, magic basically. Energetic alloy means we need like an alloy smelter or something like that. And for that we need power. For dense plates we need the compressor, which also requires power, so we just need to do a bunch of other stuff before we can make tools. But that's okay, it doesn't mean that the Kinecrus Construct thing is useless. In fact, it's very useful. I'm sure there's some things that we absolutely have to make using it, and some other things that are just convenient. So right now we have a little bit over two blocks worth of molten iron, so if we want, we can pour that out into this casting basin. That'll cool into a block of iron. Then we can grab it pour out some more, and then I can just pull this apart, turn it into ingots. Almost a stack. Nice. Okay, so let's start focusing on some other stuff, I guess. Let's see, what do they recommend? Um, I've kind of been putting off this whole CF powder. 
CF is construction foam. I've never messed with it before, but apparently we need to make... We need to make stone dust, and we need to make CF sprayer. So stone dust, I know how to make. The sprayer, I'm not sure, but I'm sure it's not too hard. So stone dust is made by just cooking stone again. That turns into stone dust. I'll just cook up a whole bunch. Let's actually get some more stone going. I'm sure we'll need it. Okay, so that's making stone dust. Um, now we need the sprayer. This one. Iron item casings and universal fluid cell. Which also... Oh, that requires tin, not iron casings. Okay, let's make the iron casings. That's... Oh, it has to be the forge. It has to be the forge hammer. So I gotta make it another kind of hammer. Iron plate plus forge hammer. Just treated stick and iron. Okay, that's no problem. Do need to go make more treated wood, though. Let's go do that. Hippity hop. Oh, yeah, so this thing's full of creosote oil now, which is actually kind of a bad thing because once it's full, it won't actually produce any more coal coke. It just stops. Hmm. Do I have the stuff to be able to suck this out? Um, is there any sort of a tank I could make that's within reach? There's like a million types of tanks. Fluid tank? Iron, iron, glass. Oh, yeah, I could totally make that. The question is whether I could stick it in there and if it would act as a bucket and suck it all up. I'm not actually sure. I guess I'll try to make that one. Okay, let's do it. Because I want to just suck out all that creosote oil. Be super handy. Got a new glass. And iron. Already got it. Whoops, I keep opening that book. I need to open this. Iron bars are just a whole bunch of iron. Okay. That should be everything to make it. Oh, there's a difference between a pressurized fluid tank and a normal fluid tank. What's... Oh, that one takes dark steel. <laughs> That's not happening. Oh, yeah, these are super cheap to make. I believe it holds eight buckets. No, it holds 16 buckets worth. It's dark, but I don't care. Okay, please work. Yes, it did work. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. Now the real test is can I use this as a bucket in the crafting window? I don't know. Let's find out. You can! Oh my god, that's beautiful. I don't have to do it bucket by bucket. Oh, I'm, I'm going to make as much of this as I can. Wait, what? Did, did, uh, uh, did it just... It just ate my tank, didn't it? Oh my god. I don't think that's intended. It crafted one and then actually used up the entire tank. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I'm not doing that again. There goes almost all our creosote oil. Right. Ah, oh, so we need some plates. I don't know, three should be okay. Then we need that hammer, the mechanism, or not mechanism hammer, the industrial craft hammer. Oh, I didn't need the plates for that. Oh well. 
but I do need the plates for this. Yeah, that'll make the iron casings. So we've got the iron casings, now we need a fluid cell. Which is tin casings, and a glass pane. Glass pane is... Ah, uh, we need more glass. Let's get some sand cooking up. There's our stone dust. Got plenty of it. We also need tin. So we need to turn that... Oh. Can I use the forge hammer on it? Okay, there we go. Tin plate. Not sure exactly how many I need of that, but hammer plus plate. Tin item casing. Put the glass like this. Not like that. Like this. Panes. Now we should be able to make the fluid cell. Now we should be able to make the sprayer. Okay, got the sprayer, but it's empty. I think to make the, the uh, foam stuff, I think we need to put the stone dust inside of water. Alright, so we need to put CF powder in water. Which is a bunch of stone dust, clay, and sand. Got plenty of all that. Sand up here. Yeah, I've got like no inventory space. Let's clear out some of this random metal. Oh, uh, clay too. Okay, this should work. Right click it. Yeah, there we go. So now I just sucked it up. How full is it? Completely full? Not a whoa. Whoops. <laughs> Weird stuff. Can I suck up too? I can. Where where is it indicating how much it has in it? Oh, it says 2,000 millibuckets there. Uh, I wish there was a bar on it or something. Oh, Christ. The behavior of this stuff is very odd. I know it needs to be a source water block. <laughs> and once you're full, if you right click a source block, then it just splurts it out instead. Also, that just turned into a construction foam wall. Well, I'm sorry, I just poisoned every single thing in this pond. Anyway, I guess we're almost full. So. I'm not sure what we're going to make with this thing in the end, but I know we need to spray it on top of... I think it's iron... Um, okay, we need to spray it onto iron scaffolding to make reinforced iron scaffolding. And I'm assuming that's to make the IC2 machines. Let's just take a look at what that's used in. Uh, you can... You can burn reinforced iron scaffold? What? Wait, it's used for nothing? No, that can't be right. That doesn't make any sense. You're, you're supposed to make this. I don't know. Whatever. It's used, <laughs> it's used for something, trust me. So, to make that, we're going to need a bunch of iron plates and... Iron fence, I guess. Um, okay, so we need a metal former for that, but we don't have to go that route. We could make the less efficient iron bar route. Which is probably what I'll do unless the metal former is easy to make. Ah, uh, let's see. Coil. 
copper cable, copper plate. We can make that. If there's an easy way to go back in the recipe chain that you're looking at, then I, it completely escapes me. So we can make the coils, electronic circuit, iron plate. Oh, we need a power source though. I still don't have a power source. Yeah, let's not rush that. So let's go with the other way. Iron plate and iron bars. And one thing I want to see is... I want to see if the smeltery is actually more efficient at making plates than it is to use a hammer. So let's make a plate cast. For that we're going to need to melt some gold. And we're going to need a plate. Iron plate will be fine. So it's going to be a little bit of a test. It might be just as efficient. But we'll find out. I'm just going to melt all that gold. So we should be able to plop that right there. And then I can use the gold once it's melted to make a cast out of it. Uh, do I have enough material in here to make an iron plate? One ingot worth. Okay, that's fine. So let's select the molten gold. You can click on which one you want and it makes it appear at the bottom, which means it's the next thing that you're going to pour out. So, boop. So I'll make a cast of it. Okay. Now we can cast plates. And I used up two ingots of gold. So, one ingot, six nuggets, four millibuckets. One, six, four. Let's see how much this uses up. Actually, I think the ca um, the thing itself might say how much material it takes. I thought it did. Hmm, doesn't seem to. Yeah, so it still took one. It still took, still took one full ingot, which is exactly what it takes using a hammer. So the only thing you're saving by doing that instead of using the hammer is you're just saving the durability, but that's not really that big of a deal if you ask me. Not unless you're just going to absolutely mass produce the plates. So not really worth it. So I'm just going to use the hammer to make the iron scaffolding. Iron bars, iron ingots. Um, do I want to make more iron bars? Nah, that should be enough scaffolding. I think it just takes three iron bars to make eight scaffolding, so it should be plenty. Three, six. I don't know, let's make 20. I'm not sure how many I need exactly. Iron scaffolding. Okay. Let's do some spraying. Still not sure what this is for, but it is required, I'm sure of it. Oh, it's weird stuff. You kind of just like fall through it, sort of, but it also pushes you. Inefficient, but I'm going to do it. Oh, I thought I had to dry. But is it done already? No, no, that's the foam. I'm looking for reinforced iron scaffold. Yeah, there's no progress bar or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure if you just wait a bit, it'll turn into the reinforced iron scaffolding. Oh, wait a minute! It doesn't turn into reinforced iron scaffolding. That was a very reasonable assumption. If you put construction foam on iron scaffolding, that it would turn into reinforced iron scaffolding, especially since the reinforced version doesn't have a recipe. 
which would indicate that it's made in the real world, but no, it makes reinforced stone. That's why I couldn't find any recipes that were worth a damn for this. This is what it makes that actually matters. Oh my god, it's gonna take forever. Well, let me get one piece of this, and then just see what it's used for. And this is also gonna complete a couple quests, I believe. I've already done one just by doing the foam. And then the reinforced stone is a whole nother one. Gives me four more. Sweet. We already made the sprayer and the powder. Gives us a painter. Don't know what that's for. Um. Uh oh. <gasps> the sea of powder is supposed to lead to the reinforced stone. Somehow I completed the reinforced stone first, and now this quest won't allow me to claim it. Uh oh. Alright, so it turns out there's a command to edit the quest thing. Quest books are very prone to breaking. I've seen that in like almost all playthroughs that I've seen using a quest book. Something always breaks. So if you do a certain command, you get this sort of like special edit book that allows you to force things to complete. So it says shift and click on quest to automatically complete them. Or, okay, that reset it. Okay, I think that's gonna be okay. I just need the CF powder. I put it away somewhere. Right there. Manually detect. Oh, I need 10. What the heck? I was just gathering some sand, waiting for some more stone dust to cook up so that I can make all the CF powder I need, and I came back here, and there's a cast here. But I've already got one in my inventory, so now I have two? Okay. Sure, why not? Oh, they don't stack in here. Okay. There, just throw it in a wet hole. Okay. Perfect. There we go. And this one shows up as already completed. Good. Now we're back on track, so I can throw this thing away. Right, so like I was originally going to do, what is this reinforced stone used for? It's obviously very important. Replicator... Health and gateway. Compressor. Machine block. I think that's important. What is the machine block used in? Heat collector. Whole bunch of things. Oh, a sterling generator. So it's used for a very basic type of power generation. Although that requires pulsating iron ingots, which requires a whole other thing. So I don't think that's going to happen. Ah, yes, it's used for the basic IC2 power generator. Yep, so to get into basic IC2 machines, we need to make the machine block. And to be able to make that, we need the reinforced stone. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to harvest the rest of this. Right, so now I want to focus on getting some power and some machines to run off that power. So let's get this generator quest finished. And then from there, you branch out to these three other IC2 machines, and I think the one I want to make first is the Macerator. So that will allow me to increase the yield that each ore will provide. Let's do that. So, Generator. There's a lot of generators, huh? Oh, Christ, which one is it? There it is. Iron Plates. Machine Block. RE Battery. Okay. RE battery, tin casing, tin cape. Oh, right. We're going to need rubber. Okay. Um, need, what is it, a tree tap? Yeah, so to get rubber, we need a tree tap. Planks. So there's a special kind of tree called a rubber tree. And I think there's actually some around here. Ah, it's getting dark. Let's 
So once we get this rubber, we'll be able to coat cables. Like insulated wires. I think this one's a rubber tree, right? Yeah. There we go. So on rubber trees, randomly you'll see these little spots here. You click that with a tree tap. Did I get it? Where the heck did it go? It just like shot out. Huh? It shot out and then disappeared. Okay. Rip. Just gonna look up all sides of it and see if there's any other hidden little spots. Yeah, no luck. Bad tree. I think... Are these darker ones over here? I don't think these are the right ones. I'm pretty sure... No, the uh, rubber tree has a very distinctive look to it. It's got like a big... Little top? A big little top. Nice. <laughs> That's a great description. It has a big narrow top, rather. So the very tip of it sticks up like a finger. Like these over here. Here we go. Very easy to recognize. It's like the tree is giving you the finger. What? Where is it going? Okay. What if I, like, block it? Okay. What? Well, I could break the leaves to find more holes, but I think I'll just search the bottom. Um, I don't think distance has anything to do with whether they disappear. I have no idea why that's disappearing. Do you just have to get it within, like, one second? So you just have to be, like, right here? What? Oh. What? But the other ones didn't do that. They just were gone, gone. Are. <gasps> bloop, bloop, bloop. That'll probably be enough. So I think we just cook this up to make the rubber. Just plant a rubber tree sapling right here next to my base. Should come in handy later. Ah, I love the juice. So let's see how we use this, make sure I don't do anything stupid with it. Sticky dynamite, whoa. Cool. Smelt it into rubber. Okay, yeah, so that's how you do it. And once we get the extractor, we can make it three times as efficient. From one piece of sticky resin, we can get three rubber instead of the smelting method, which just gives you one. But that's not an option at the moment, so just smelt it all up. Alright, well that's going. You do at IC2. So in the search, you can do at and then the mod name. So this will limit my search to everything inside of the IC2 mod, and then I can search for generator, and it'll be much easier to find than it was before. So, machine block. Reinforced stone, four of that, got it. You know, should I be making double of everything? Is the recipe for the generator very similar to the recipe for the macerator? No. The macerator's actually quite a bit different. Okay. So we're just making this. 
Aluminum rods. Uh, okay, so I've got the stone. Four aluminum rods. How do I do that? Two aluminum ingots. Oh. Easy enough. There's also another method here, but this... No, that's not happening anytime soon. You know, I don't think I've actually processed any aluminum. So the bauxite is what turns into aluminum. Oh. I can't grind it. Um, can I put it in the smeltery? Please? Oh, thank god I can. Man, that goes fast. I'll just put it all in there, I guess. Okay, well, I'll just turn it into a big old block, break it apart, and then use that to make the rods. So, if we break apart this thing... Two aluminum becomes four aluminum rods, that's all the rods we need. So now we have everything but... the resonating... plate. Uh... I think that's gonna be an issue. Resonating ore. I saw that, but I feel like I couldn't get it. I don't remember whether I can get it with a diamond pickaxe. Maybe I, I couldn't at the time, but I, maybe I didn't have a diamond pickaxe. Uh, let me go see if I can find it. Ah, oh, here it finally is. That was so hard to find. It took me like 45 minutes. That stuff is extraordinarily rare. Or, once again, I'm extraordinarily unlucky. Well, at least here's a good opportunity to find a bunch of other stuff. And once again, I'm perpetually out of coal, so I'm actually going to get this. Let's cook it up. Oh, right. I have the rubber going. Now, just that will make eight of the other stuff, right? Yes, eight resonating plates. Beautiful. All right, where was I? I'm trying to make the IC2 generator, trying to make the machine block. Um, oh yeah, we should have everything to make it now. Although I put a bunch of stuff away. Reinforced stone, aluminum rod. Aha. All right, so we've got that. We need two iron plates. That's easy. Re battery. Tin item casing. Ah, oh, right. How much of that did I need? Just one? Just one. Tin cable and rubber. To make tin cable, I need to cut a tin plate with cutters. Three iron plates, two iron ingots. Uh... There we go. Now I need tin. I have a little bit of tin. Um, I also got some more tin, which I should maybe start cooking up because I feel like I'm going to need it. Where are you? There you are. Let's go throw that in up there. Hopefully it'll double in this thing, I'm not sure. Oh, it's actually going super fast. Let's see. Seven. So that's seven turned into seven ingots. Shit. That didn't double. I think I just wasted it. Oh well. <laughs> right, so ten plus snippers. Hmm? Oh, I need to turn into a plate first. Right. Just make a bunch of it. I don't need that much, but it's fine. So, one of that, one rubber, insulated tin cable. Alright, fantastic. So, back to this. We got this, got the redstone, tin item casing.
I think each one makes two, so I think I need two of that. Bang it out again, we get four, and then I think we can make it. Redstone. Two iron plates. And we have our first generator. And we have a quest for that. Gives us some insulated copper cable so we can use that to actually get the power from the generator to whatever we want to use. Although I think we can also place a generator directly next to the thing we want to power and we won't need to use cable. Pizza or a block of charcoal? Let's go with the charcoal. Okay, macerator. What did you need? Flint, easy, cobblestone, easy, electronic circuit. Oh, I guess I know what I'm going to use all the cables I just got on. So all of that plus iron plate. One iron plate should be it. There we go. Basic machine casing. So eight iron plates. Plus something that's going to be kind of hard to make, I think. Um, bronze. I think we can make that in the smeltery. We already have the redstone gear. We got it as a reward for a quest. I know I can make this version of it, but I think this one would probably be easier. Um, how do you make bronze? I forgot. It's like three copper and one tin or something like that. Aha, I just looked it up and it is three copper and, uh, well, three copper to one tin. And I've already got some tin melted in the thing, so that's actually kind of perfect. So I want to make a block of this so I can break it apart. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's melt all that. And as soon as that melts, it should automatically alloy with the tin and produce bronze. There we go. Bronze is going. See, it's getting converted. Getting larger. There we go, we got one block. So let's pour that out. What's that? Aluminum? Yeah. Alright, let's pull that bronze apart. Into ingots. And then grab the redstone gear, which we've got as a quest reward. And now we should be able to craft it. Oh, right, they need to be plates, not ingots. So we gotta hammer them out. There we go. Alright, now we have a generator and a macerator. Well, I want to end the episode on watching them run, so let's just set them up real quick and... Uh, I'll put them outside. Actually, no. Generator, macerator. So, let's put a little bit of coal inside of it. Generating power. Yep, that thing's getting power. That thing's building up its own buffer. Now the big question I have is, what the heck can I macerate? Like, as far as the iron ores go, especially, I'm sure the normal goethite ore will work, but what about, like, limonite, for example? Let's see what happens. So goethite... Oh, it's working just very slowly. And also silently, I was worried for a second. So that works. Let's see how much it gives us. So normally we were only able to get one ingot's worth out of that, but with the macerator we can get two. Nice. Now what about limonite? Ah, it does not work. Wow. Yeah, anything but the goethite just doesn't work in anything but, I guess, rock hounding and or the ember stuff. Well, that sucks. That sucks, but still. We can double it, so pretty sweet. 
And especially think about it if we get the iron ore from the nether. The iron ore from the nether becomes two pieces of normal iron, which then become four pieces. So one piece of nether iron becomes four ingots. It's going to be pretty fantastic. We also completed this quest. Copper, gold, or iron? Iron is the thing I need by far the most. Okay. Making pretty good progress on the quest, huh? So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to keep doing more quests.